Hey there, welcome to Women Blazing Trails. My name is Eva. Uh, it is, I'm recording this on Easter weekend, so it's kind of loud here in the town that I live in. So I'll apologize now if you hear any crazy noises. Um, I was just going through some of my comments on, one, on an older video and somebody wanted me to talk a little bit more about letting go of toxic people and toxic things and how to do that. So I'm going to dive into that just a little bit more um, in this show. And I'm going to drop a link. I just created a course. I would really love you to go check it out. It is a cutting, it is, it is a cord cutting course. Um, it's pretty powerful. I still might be adding a guided, a mini guided meditation to it, a cord cutting meditation. I might do that maybe this week. We'll see about that. I'm still new to creating meditations and I'm not, I'm not very good. I'm not, I shouldn't say I'm not very good at it, but anyway. So when we hold on to, and I talked about this, when we hold on to toxic things, toxic people, toxic events, the thoughts, oh, the thoughts that plague us, the thoughts that stay inside of our our heart or our soul or the the anger that's on our chest um and all that stuff so we we already know that that's causing us damage that's damaging you doesn't everything that you feel all the pain and the hurt and the frustration whatever you're feeling only the person that you're the person that you're having those feelings towards they don't feel any of those things. Only you are feeling those feelings, right? So it's important to let go. But I think it's important for people to know, and I'm not sure if I talked about this in the last video, sorry. I think it's important to know that a lot of the, a lot of what, a lot of who we are today and what we are holding on to today, the cords of attachment that we have to have today, if we're attached to a person, an ex, whatever, a lot of our cords of attachment come from some trauma or some hurt or something that happened to us in our past. It could have been from a childhood. It could have been from an, from an abusive. If you were married for like 20 or 25 years and your husband was a douchebag and he was a narcissist, a lot of, a lot of what we're feeling today has come from, from that, from the trauma and the things that have happened to us in our past that we haven't dealt with and healed from yet. And I should probably talk a little bit more about that. I don't want to talk too much about it because I really do want you to check out the course, uh, the cord cutting course. But we, th this is our reality, right? The the pain that we have um, from our past, the trauma that we've had from our past. This pain and this trauma validates who we are. And what happens is that many of us use this to still define who we are today and to validate who we are today. This is who I am. This is why I feel this way. And this is why here, because look at my pain. It's all because of my pain. Come and pet my pain. Look at my pain. And we hold it out like a trophy. And I, and there's going to come a time in your life where you need to not let this pain trophy validate you but you're overcoming the pain. You want that to be your new story. I had this pain. It really sucked. It sucked the fucking life out of me, but I've dealt with this pain. I've taken this pain and I put it on the table and I dissected it and I figured out what the problem was and I beat it up and I'm like, okay, you know what pain, this isn't who we are anymore. Our story now is our overcoming story. Does that make sense? It's, and it's not easy to do. It's, it's very messy and it's self-improvement and self-healing is very messy and exhausting. People don't tell you that. People are like, oh, just go read some self-help books and go do a little bit of work and it's going to be beautiful and you're going to be this butterfly. It's, it's exhausting and messy and ugly and frustrating and you lose a lot of people along the way. You also shed the old you and you emerge as a new you. But this can't happen until you take the pain from the past and all the trauma and all the people that hurt you and all the shitty things that happened to you. Nothing, no healing is going to take place. No change is going to take place until you take all that one at a time, just take it one at a time and, and go, okay, I'm going to take 
Henry because Henry hurt me a lot. So I'm going to take all the pain that Henry, I'm going to we're going to put Henry on the table and we're going to dissect Henry. Henry did this and this. Oh, I feel because I feel this way now because of what Henry did to me 15 years ago. So you need to do that. And I talk a lot about that uh, in my course. I will drop the link. But I think once people once people realize. And I just realized this, like I was probably, when did I start my healing journey? Like I was probably 51 or 52 when I started my healing journey. And that's when I realized, oh, this is why I still have all this pain and anger and hurt. It's because of all the trauma that I still have. Like I buried it deep. You think you healed. I'm like, oh no, I, I dealt with it. Cool. But when you still have triggers and when you still have cords of attachment, you have not healed from your trauma at all. So you need to dig it all out and go, all right, this is from this and I need to work on that. This this cord of attachment comes from this and I need to work that out and I need to feel that, figure that out, heal it, deal with it and heal it. So um, there are a lot of different ways to heal from trauma, cords of attach, cutting cords of attachment. Um, I think the, the, the one main tip that I can give you, the biggest tip that I can give you right now uh, to get your healing process started is to just take, you know, get a, get a notepad or you can do it on your computer or wherever you're comfortable and just take one thing from your past, just one trauma that or one person that you're still attached to, toxically, energetically attached to. Just take one thing, just one at a time. Just take one thing. Maybe it's your ex-husband of 25 years or whatever. And go, okay, you know what? Henry did this to me. So we're going to take Henry, we're going to put him on and put him under the microscope. And we're going to take and pick apart all the things and all the trauma that you suffered from with Henry. And you're going to rewrite that story. Okay, so Henry used to call me stupid. You can write that. Out. I'm not stupid. Henry called me stupid because Henry is a douchebag and Henry was a narcissist and Henry was angry and he was toxic, whatever. So you can go, okay, Henry used to call me stupid all the time. So today I still think I'm stupid. So you're going to write that. I'm not stupid. I am very smart. I have a lot of skills and I have a lot of talent. So I hope you can't hear the sirens. So take it's little things like that. You need to take all those little things. Henry used to think I was fat and uh, Henry used to call me fat and ugly. Oh, I'm not fat and ugly. I think I'm beautiful. I have beautiful eyes. I have beautiful skin, whatever. So you need to take all those little things one by one and start healing from Henry. And you'll see as you start healing um, how much better you're going to feel. And it's not, you know, it's not a one-off. You can't just do this one day or one week and go, okay, I'm all healed from Henry. Healing is an ongoing journey. Like you're probably going to do things, continue to do, continuously do things and heal every day for the rest of your life. There's, it seems like there's always something, even for me, there's still things that come up for me. Sometimes I'm like, oh, okay. I haven't dealt with that yet. I need to deal with that, right? So, uh, and for me, so here's a perfect example. This is just a small example. So Easter weekend, like it's Easter here now, right? So Samana Santa, it's all Easter and celebrating. So my mom used to drag me to church, like literally drag me to church. And I hated going to church. Like I hated going to church. And so this whole celebrating reminds me of that, that, you know, that feeling, oh my God, I hate going to church. I wish my mother, I hate my mother. I wish she would leave me alone. Why, you know, so, and I, so that caused a trigger for me, but I turned that around. So I caught myself and I turned that around because I, and this is kind of odd. You guys are probably going to think I'm kind of crazy, but the one, the one thing that I really do love about Easter in church is the smell of the incense. The smell of the incense makes me feel peaceful. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. I don't understand it. But as angry as I am at the memory of my mom and dragging me to church, it's the smell of the incense that makes me feel peaceful. So I can take that anger from that I had towards my, my mom's dead now anyway, and go, all oh, right, just take in the incense and just feel some peace and just let that memory go. So anyway, I just wanted to share that funny, quirky little example with you because I still have triggers, right? Trauma still shows up. It shows up in all shapes and forms. So 
when your trauma shows up or when your triggers show up, you have to catch it. Go, oh, why, why am I feeling like this? Catch it and then deal with it. Um, so, I, 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 so I didn't really want to talk about traumas and triggers, um, but it's important, but we do want to talk about cutting cords of attachment. We do want to talk about letting go of toxic peoples and thing, people and things. And as you let, and you have to take the first step, the, that is probably the hardest thing to do is to take the first step to go, okay, you know what, today I'm having a, today I'm having a trigger from whatever it is, I'm still attached to whatever person, whatever thought, I need to let it go. So I, I'm gonna sit down with my pen and paper, and I'm going to deal with it now. Like you have to, like you can't stop, you can't keep putting it off, like you have to deal with it because it's just gonna be the death of you. You have to find, careful, you have to finally like get to it and start, and go today. Today I'm dealing with this with this cord of attachment, or I'm dealing with this toxic person, or I'm dealing with my thoughts that I'm having about this toxic event that happened 25 years ago. So anyway, I hope that that helps you a little bit. That's all I want to say about that because I mean I do have a course, and I hate to go on and on about it, but I have a course, and you should check it out because it's a really really powerful course that will help you cut your cords of attachment to toxic people and things. So please, please, please check it out. Because, you know, we're not here to hang on to the past and be hurt and angry and sad and frustrated. That's not what we're here for. We're not here for misery and we're not here for suffering. You are here for a life of crazy, ridiculous joy, but it's up to you to create that life. It's up to you. It's always, always up to you to make any changes in your life and to create the life that you deserve and want. Nobody else, nobody else can do that for you. Only you can do that for you. Anyway, I love you. That's all I got for you. Please, please check out the links below. Um, that's all I got for you for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day and goodbye from sunny Guatemala. I love you.